My experience serving on the Ethics Committee uh, was one of the most valuable experiences that I've had, I would say, in the last 10 years of my profession. Having the opportunity to serve with members from around the state of Indiana, some really incredible professionals that take ethics and the integrity of our profession very seriously. Uh, and to me, that was probably the highlight of that experience. I would also say the opportunity to assist and serve members, helping them through their ethical dilemmas. They're calling up and say, and they're saying, I don't know what to do. And often it wasn't a matter of us investigating or uh, getting into that level of, of detail with the member. It was so often just to help them through and let them know there's someone here at the Indiana CPA Society, their professional home, that was willing to listen to the issues they were dealing with and to help guide them through that. Knowing that someone was here to help and then being able to be one of those individuals on that committee that served in that role, that was, that was an incredible part of that experience. The core responsibility is really threefold. One, to assist members in, with their ethical dilemmas, uh, whether they're in public accounting or industry, nonprofit, regardless of their area of, of practice. Second is to educate members on what are the changes in our code of professional conduct? What are the expectations for us as members? You know, it's easy to get busy about what we do every day and forget about some of those ethical obligations and that code of professional conduct that really guides our profession and our conduct. And third is to enforce the code of professional conduct. If we have members that are violating the Code of Professional Conduct or uh, it's been alleged that they violated the Code of Professional Conduct, the Ethics Committee is responsible for investigating those alleged violations. The Indiana CPA Society is, uh, currently has an agreement uh, and we've agreed to adhere to the Joint Ethics Enforcement Program. We know it as JEEP uh, and we cooperate with the AICPA in the investigations. If the member is a member of the Indiana CPA Society as well as the AICPA, then uh, the AICPA allows us as the Indiana CPA Society's Professional Ethics Committee to investigate that member uh, regarding those violations. Uh, and that is an agreement that was agreed to and adopted by the Indiana CPA Board of Directors. When a complaint is filed, with the Ethics Committee here at the Society. A subcommittee is formed. And that subcommittee takes a look at the complaint and any evidence that has been submitted and determines whether there is cause, sufficient cause to move forward with that complaint in the form of a full-fledged investigation. That subcommittee will, again, gather information from all of the sources, all the evidence, and then make a determination whether or not uh, there, it should be dismissed or if a letter of corrective action should be issued, or if that member uh, should be suspended, if the recommendation is to suspend or to terminate that member's uh, membership here in the society. Once that is completed, that member has the right to have a hearing, unless one has already been heard uh, through another governmental agency, but they do have the right to a hearing here at the society to determine if, if in fact this really is an ethical violation. Uh, once that is completed, uh, if that member is a member of the Indiana CPA Society and the AICPA, then that uh, complaint or that uh, decision will ultimately be heard by the Joint Trial Board uh, for that member and to determine whether or not their membership in the Indiana CPA Society and the AICPA will be suspended or terminated. Typically we get uh, the, the client that calls up and there's a debate on who owns the client's records. Uh, that's, that is a typical complaint. Uh, I know the committee gets that type of a complaint virtually every year, multiple complaints in that area. Uh, I would say primarily it does deal with client issues. Sometimes uh, we will get complaints where there has been a CPA working for a firm that CPA leaves that firm and then takes uh, the previous firm's records with them or 
the client list and occasionally we will get that type of a complaint. Uh, we will also get notifications from the Internal Revenue Service, HHS, and other governmental agencies indicating that one of our members has violated their standards. And then we follow up and investigate that as well. They can simply call the Indiana CPA Society. There is a section on the website that allows them to view how to file a complaint, who they need to contact, and so forth. It is important for those that would be filing a complaint to remember that they, the complaint needs to be in writing and we need to know their name. Uh, we do not just accept um, anonymous complaints over the phone. It does need to be in writing because this really is a serious matter. You're, you're talking about that member's, that member's livelihood and their reputation. And as a CPA, without our reputation, without our integrity, we don't have a whole lot to offer. And we don't want to do anything that might harm that person's reputation or reflect poorly upon their integrity and their character.